Up to 43% of women develop acne during pregnancy. In this video, we're going to talk about what causes acne in pregnancy and how to treat it. I'm Dr. John Barbieri, a board-certified dermatologist and acne expert at Harvard Medical School. Let's dive into it. During pregnancy, there are substantial shifts in hormones, and these increases in hormones to support the developing baby, they turn on the oil gland in their skin, the sebaceous gland, and that's what drives this acne. Acne is often worse during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy, and often acne in pregnancy is more inflammatory. They're deeper, more painful acne bumps than what we see outside of pregnancy. When it comes to who gets acne during pregnancy, it's more common in women who are younger, who are having their first pregnancy, or who have a history of something like polycystic ovarian syndrome. When it comes to treating acne in pregnancy, we've got a bunch of both over-the-counter and prescription options that we can turn to. In general, when I think about treating acne in pregnancy, I really do try to avoid both topical retinols and retinoids. Although there is some evidence to suggest that these can be used safely because they're not substantially absorbed into the skin, from my perspective, I would never want to wonder if something I was using for acne might have potentially harmed the baby. And so out of an abundance of caution, I really stay away from these because I think we have other options that we can use. Similarly, I try to avoid Bakuchiol as well. I know this is sometimes suggested by people as a pregnancy safe retinoid, but from my standpoint, it activates a lot of the same pathways as retinoids and retinols. And there's really an absence of data that actually show that it's safe. We kind of are just assuming that it is. And so from my standpoint, there's actually more data that retinoids and retinols are safe in pregnancy than Bakuchiol. So I avoid Bakuchiol in pregnancy as well. My first line over-the-counter options are benzoyl peroxide, azelaic acid, and glycolic acid. These are well-known effective acne treatments and they also have a track record of safety during pregnancy. Azelaic acid is often our kind of initial go-to treatment. It has an excellent safety profile and it's available over the counter in 10% strength and there are a number of good options available. And there's also 15 to 20% prescription strength that you can get from a dermatologist or other healthcare provider. In addition to treating acne, azelaic acid can also help address dark spots. So if you've got both acne and dark spots, azelaic acid can be a great place to start. Glycolic acid can be another great option and they're available both as washes, toners, and as chemical peels. And glycolic acid, again, nice acne fighting properties. And it also, like azelaic acid, can help with dark spots. So another good option if you're dealing with dark spots left behind by your acne. When it comes to benzoyl peroxide during pregnancy, I like to use it as a wash to try to minimize any potential for absorption into the body of the benzoyl peroxide. And I usually aim for something in the four to 5% strength range. There are a number of great options available out there. Benzoyl peroxide can bleach fabric, so it's important to make sure you rinse it well. And it does tend to work better if you can let it sit on the skin for a minute or two before you rinse it off. So I often suggest using it in the shower, kind of putting it on the areas where you've got acne, doing some other things, you know, wash your hair, wash other parts of your body, and then rinse it off so it has some time to work. Sodium sulfacetamide washes are another acne treatment that's thought to be safe during pregnancy. In my experience, I don't think they work as well as some of their other options. So they're not my first go-to thing. I'd rather start with things like azelaic acid, glycolic acid, and benzoyl peroxide, but it's another tool that we have to help us manage acne in pregnancy. Moving on to prescription options, topical antibiotics are really our main tool here. Clindamycin is usually my starting place. It's a low cost option. It's well known to work well for acne outside of pregnancy. It's one of the most frequently used topical antibiotics, so we have a lot of data about it. So that's usually where I'll start. And that's great to add together with benzoyl peroxide to help prevent antibiotic resistance to make sure that it keeps working over time. Other topical antibiotics like Dapsone, I tend to avoid because of the potential for neonatal hyperbilirubinemia when used in the third trimester. And I also stay away from things like minocycline foam because we know tetracycline class antibiotics and minocycline's a tetracycline class antibiotic can potentially influence the baby's bone or teeth development. For more severe acne, oral antibiotics like amoxicillin, cephalexin, and azithromycin can be really helpful options. I tend to use either amoxicillin or cephalexin since these both have good evidence that they can work in acne and they're a bit easier to dose than azithromycin. However, it is important to keep in mind that amoxicillin can potentially be associated with cleft lip or palate when used in the first trimester, so I try to stay away from it during the first trimester of pregnancy. 
For small breakouts, local injections of corticosteroids can be a really helpful adjunctive treatment strategy. This can be done by a dermatologist or other healthcare provider, and it's a nice way to deal with if you have a couple of lesions that are really bothering you. Finally, what about during lactation? Well, now we start to have a lot of our options again. We still have all those options we can use in pregnancy, but now we can start to think about antienergens again, like spironolactone or clascoderone. That's a topical antienergen. And again, we can start to use topical retinoids as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like so that we can share it with more people. If you're looking for more acne and rosacea content, subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other videos. And if you have other questions about acne and pregnancy, or acne in general, ask me about acne in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. See ya.